As NASA scrubbed the Artemis 1 uncrewed mission to the moon once again, Tesla and SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk came up with a suggestion on Sunday for the ailing mission that will finally land astronauts on the lunar surface after decades. NASA engineers could not overcome a hydrogen leak in a quick disconnect phase of the Space Launch System rocket launch on Saturday. According to Eric Berger of Ars Technica, NASA has a tolerance for a small amount of hydrogen leakage and anything above a 4% concentration of hydrogen near the quick disconnect is considered a flammability hazard. Musk replied to Berger's accurate assessment, saying that Raptor design started out using H2, or hydrogen, but switched over to CH4, or methane. Latter is the best combo of high efficiency and ease of operation in my opinion. The delta V is the difference of velocity that a rocket engine can impose on a spacecraft as a function of the specific impulse and the variation in the mass of the vehicle itself. And as Musk explained, Delta V difference between H2 and CH4 is small for most missions because the CH4 tank is much smaller and no insulation is needed. SpaceX wants its rockets to be simple, cheap, and reliable. The best part is no part. The best process is no process. Though hydrogen is efficient compared to other rocket propellants, it adds complexity to rocket engines and rocket design. Hydrogen is a cryogenic fluid. Its melting point is negative 259 degrees Celsius or negative 435 degrees Fahrenheit. And its boiling point is around negative 252 degrees Celsius or negative 423 degrees Fahrenheit. Hydrogen needs to be stored in extremely cold temperatures to keep it in liquid form. Because of this, a hydrogen rocket needs insulation around tanks, thus increasing rocket weight, production complexity, and cost. Furthermore, other problems arise because of hydrogen's low boiling point. On a long trip to the moon and Mars, hydrogen will boil off and evaporate. Moreover, during the Earth's re-entry of the Starship, the generated heat will cause a significant technical challenge to keep hydrogen liquefied in the fuel tank. However, methane does not have these problems. Hydrogen embrittlement is a serious issue. When metal comes in contact with cryogenic hydrogen, the metal becomes brittle. Therefore, a reusable rocket design that uses hydrogen is very complex and challenging. Hydrogen engines need advanced metallurgy to prevent this embrittlement. But that's not the case with methane. The density of hydrogen is 70 grams per liter. In contrast, the density of methane is 422 grams per liter. As a result, a hydrogen rocket's fuel tank needs to be significantly bigger than a methane-powered rocket. A big tank means a heavier rocket. Therefore, a methane-powered rocket would be lighter compared to a hydrogen rocket. Hydrogen is the smallest molecule on Earth. It leaks easily, primarily through the welded joints of the fuel tanks. Therefore, it needs extraordinary precision and care to make the fuel tank leak-proof. Methane, yet again, does not have this leak issue. Hydrogen is also expensive compared to methane, and as we can see, though hydrogen is more efficient, it has many drawbacks. SpaceX needed a rocket engine that does not have these issues. That's why Musk favors methane engines. Methane is cheap. A passive cooling system is enough to store methane in liquid form. Significantly denser than hydrogen, storable for a more extended period, does not leak, does not require insulation on the fuel tank, and the rocket design is less complex compared to hydrogen-powered rockets. SpaceX has developed the Raptor. It's a methane-powered full-flow staged combustion cycle engine. The Raptor engine is the first ever in history, a full-flow staged combustion cycle engine that is to be flown on a rocket. No rocket engine that uses methane has ever reached orbit, except SpaceX's rockets. And as we mentioned earlier, Elon Musk wants to go to Mars. He hopes for a self-sustaining city on the Red Planet in 20 years' time. Musk himself also emphasized that methane is very important for launch missions because it's easier to produce on Mars. Similar to SpaceX, NASA also has ambitions to set foot on Mars, which raises the question, why does NASA still use liquid hydrogen as a fuel source for its rockets if it's so difficult to work with? Why not use other easier-to-handle alternatives such as methane or kerosene? One reason is that hydrogen is a very efficient fuel, meaning that it provides better gas mileage when used in rocket engines. 
However, the real answer is that Congress mandated that NASA continue to use space shuttle main engines as part of the SLS rocket program. In 2010, when Congress wrote the authorization bill for NASA that led to the creation of the Space Launch System, it directed the agency to utilize existing contracts, investments, workforce, industrial base, and capabilities from the Space Shuttle and Orion and Ares-1 projects, including existing United States propulsion systems, including liquid, fuel engines, external tank or tank-related capability, and solid rocket motor engines. During a news conference on Saturday, Ars Technica asked NASA Administrator Bill Nelson whether it was the right decision for NASA to continue working with hydrogen after the agency's experience with the space shuttle. In 2010, Nelson was a U.S. Senator from Florida and ringleader of the space authorization bill alongside U.S. Senator Kay Bailey Hutchison of Texas. We deferred to the experts, Nelson said. By this, Nelson meant that the Senate worked alongside some officials at NASA and within industry to design the SLS rocket. These industry officials who would continue to win lucrative contracts from NASA for their work on shuttle-related hardware were only too happy to support the new rocket design. Among the idea's opponents were Lori Garver, who served as NASA's deputy administrator at the time. She said the decision to use space shuttle components for the agency's next-generation rocket seemed like a terrible idea, given the challenges of working with hydrogen demonstrated over the previous three decades. They took finicky, expensive programs that couldn't fly very often, stacked them together differently, and said, now, all of a sudden, it's going to be cheap and easy. Yeah, we've flown them before, but they've proven to be problematic and challenging. Challenging. This is one of the things that boggled my mind. What about it was going to change? I attribute it to this sort of group think, the contractors and the self-licking ice cream cone. Now, NASA faces the challenge of managing this finicky hardware through more inspections and tests after so many already. The rocket's core stage, manufactured by Boeing, was shipped from its factory in Louisiana more than two and a half years ago. It underwent nearly a year of testing in Mississippi before arriving at Kennedy Space Center in April of 2021. Since then, NASA and its contractors have been assembling the complete rocket and testing it on the launch pad. Effectively, Saturday's launch attempt was the sixth time NASA has tried to completely fuel the first and second stages of the rocket, and then get deep into the countdown. To date, it has not succeeded with any of these fueling tests, known as wet dress rehearsals. On Saturday, the core stage's massive liquid hydrogen tank with a capacity of more than 500,000 gallons was only 11% full when the scrub was called. But as they say, seventh time's a charm. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.